live here at WLCN, WLCN 96.3 Viewpoint. Uh, we're pleased to have with us uh, Joni Keys, who is a point lady uh, for the law enforcement uh, torch running the Polar Plunge. Mm -hmm. um, my son Greg did that when he was uh, down at uh, Tams, uh, not incarcerated. He didn't was, live you know, there? Oh, yeah, you know. <laughs> That's he was in good. charge of the work camp down there. <laughs> but he took the Polar Plunge. And good. I thought, uh, uh, of course, he had a little average boy that would give it, <laughs> insulate him a little bit. But uh, I don't know that he's done it again. Uh, I don't think I'm going to do it this year. Well, you've done it for so many. Yes, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well and you had something you wanted to say. Well, Steve yeah. Nichols, you said, yeah. has mm -hmm. has taken the poll. You go, he boy. Has. He good. has. Yes, That's he has. Uh, it, it began mm -hmm. with the law enforcement torch run and kind of evolved from there. Right. And so law enforcement was really on board at the genesis of the whole the thing. The very beginning of it, yes. Um, there were a lot of law enforcement chiefs of police that mm -hmm. that got involved and chose Special Olympics as an organization, their charity of choice, to participate in um, a fundraiser that they termed the Polar Plunge. Now this didn't originate necessarily in Illinois, however we were one of the first states on board with this particular Polar Plunge. And so we've got a gentleman by the name of Joe Pena who is in charge of uh, really keys all the participation from a lot of the law enforcement throughout the state of Illinois. They have a big conference um, in uh, the summer, in June, right before summer games, and um, and they all come together and they begin the, the prior year planning for all of their fundraisers, and the Polar Plunge being one of the, the main fundraisers that they've always done. And uh, us as area directors kind of took it on and said, you know, we can also get involved in this and um, begin to raise money for this particular polar plunge. But um, it originated so that they could have the torch run. And I was kind of explaining to you on break that the torch run is an event where we actually have law enforcement all throughout the state, different legs uh, that begin an actual run with the torch. Um, from Southern Illinois all the way up to Bloomington Normal and they end in Bloomington Normal at our summer games and so uh, all along the way they're they're collecting you know up into this big event they're collecting money and um, then they present Special Olympics Illinois with a, a large check um, at the summer games after their their torch run but it's re if you've never seen it it's just awesome and I know that a leg used to come through here in Lincoln and they used to come through the square there and and uh, we had a lot of our athletes out there cheering them on. So, well, sure. um, but it's it's really a unique thing, and and we're really very fortunate <laughs> to have the law enforcement involved with with our fundraising for the state of Illinois because they put us on the map. I mean, they're they're the law enforcement of state of the state of Illinois um, in the big scheme of things throughout the whole United States. With this particular torch run fundraiser, we're like number three in the whole United States. Really? Um, so. Illinois has really done well with that and really involved a lot of law enforcement in are the you, uh, cause. Are you able to get uh, uh, media coverage, i.e. Uh, a television station come and, and have a few seconds clip on the evening news? Are you able to, to mm. get any cooperation there? Um, we do. Um, it's, it's a tough job for them to it is. send a, a, a crew out. <laughs> they're very know. yeah. They're very busy. They've got a yeah. lot of assignments mm -hmm. and and uh, so we're hoping to you know news releases go out all the time um, leading up into this event. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping yes that we get some news coverage on it. Um, obviously, WLCN and and uh, the the newspapers here, the Lincoln Daily, they're a sponsor, and we've got mm -hmm. the Courier. They're involved and. Um, so we've and the Banner Times they're they're involved so they do a lot of good coverage for us and That's not to mention I mean the Chamber of Commerce too has really done a phenomenal job with Is getting Jim going to do a plunge by plunge report <laughs> <laughs> or a plunge <laughs> period yeah. well they're doing or, a, a live remote I, like I hear I like so for him, him plunging yeah well, yeah so with the heart situation no, well have today, yeah yeah have to be a little careful about that right right but uh, the the Special Olympics here in in this community impacts a fair number of people. Mm -hmm, absolutely. How, how does one, if one has a youngster who's challenged, mm -hmm. 
uh, and want to participate? How does one get involved in, in getting their youngster in, uh, involved in the program? Okay. Yeah, well, um, there is no specific <clears throat> guidelines. Everybody says, well, do they have to go through some sort of screening or testing or mm -hmm. IQ test, that kind of mm -hmm. thing? That's kind of a myth about special, that is a myth about Special Olympics. In order to participate in Special Olympics, they have to be at least eight years old in order to participate and be diagnosed with some sort of um, developmental disability. Um, so um, that can come in a wide variety, wide range. Um, we don't do any testing. We don't have, you know, if they want to be involved in Special Olympics and the doctor signs off that, you know, yes, in fact, they do have some sort of uh, developmentally mm -hmm. disability, um, then we will allow them to participate. We have a, a medical application for participation that's kind of their ticket in to Special Olympics. And that's good for two years from the date the doctor signs. And we have several um, group homes here that are involved in Special Olympics. Um, and I do have to mention Ryan Curry and uh, Lincoln mm -hmm. Logan Mason Rehabilitation Center and uh, the Lincoln Park District who are very involved in getting individuals that live out there in the community on their own or with their families and involve them in the different particular sports and set up the trainings. Um, so they're speaking with the facilities. It's a lot of time um, commitment as a volunteer, oh my um, you know, to do that, but we greatly respect and great and need that because all our coaches are volunteers and so they give of their time to um, to coach these athletes and to work with these athletes they have to have eight weeks of training prior to competition and then they come to what we call our local or area competition and if they get a gold medal there they advance on to a district or sectional uh, level of competition and from there they advance on to a state level if they get the gold medal in a state level, then they have the opportunity once national games or world games opportunities come around to be nominated, depending on how many slots and in what sports we're given those slots in that, that we can nominate athletes. So that's kind of how Adam got uh, you know, nominated. The, the involvement of, of the way we work with our de developmentally challenged folks, mm -hmm. uh, not only youngsters, but seniors as well. Right. You know, in, in the so-called good old days, uh, unfortunately, they were kind of kept in a, in a well, almost in a closet in a way, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. uh, uh, metaphorically speaking. But but the way we now uh, open up avenues of opportunity for them is just remarkable. It and, is. And think it's what it has to do to that mind in there to be participating with uh, their like folks mm -hmm. and, and, and on the same plane, same level. Mm -hmm and achieving or not achieving as the case may be mm -hmm. but nonetheless they're out there competing so think what that must mean to those youngsters and the seniors absolutely and you know i say they they are they're eight years old in order to compete but we've got athletes then there is no age limit as to how old you have to be oh, you know to we've got some that are competing in there in their 70s uh you know and some in their 80s that can walk the track or they can bowl still or you know, so they stay active. They they're still competing. They're still a part of a, a team or an agency, and and uh, receiving those medals and just really feeling good about themselves. So it gets them out, keeps them active. Well, there are a lot of not <coughs> myself included, of course, but there are a lot of senior. Well, you are who are very <laughs> physically. Do you challenge? You're right about that. No, 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 <laughs> no. Who are very physically active? I can tell you somebody who would. <laughs> Tell you that's right. Developmentally challenged. <laughs> well, I'll fight them for you. Um, no, you're right. Um, the fact that that they can get out and, and meet with their their counterparts, so to speak, that's a great thing. Oh, you bet. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm sure that the eight year olds could have a basketball team, but the 78 year olds probably aren't playing basketball. What are their events, for instance? Well, you know, we have uh, basketball skills competition, which um, we have different skill tests that they do where uh -huh. they can just stand and from each spot on the basketball court shoot the ball and get so many points for that particular shot if it makes the, you know, hits the a basket. Three -pointer or hits, a two-pointer? <coughs> right, right. Two points from shooting at one point, three points for shooting at, at, you know, a point further out, that kind of thing. And then we have one that's called the target pass where they throw um, to a square uh, measured out 
one meter square um, they throw and catch and so mm -hmm. they get so many points if they throw and catch that um, and then they move on to the dribble so they do a 10 meter dribble so that kind of gives them an opportunity to participate in a basketball related mm -hmm. um, competition it takes a lot of volunteers to work with these folks oh absolutely when you have these functions absolutely and they have to be a, a, a certain mind bent to be able to do that uh, and show uh, show a little empathy mm -hmm. and encouragement sure so it takes a special person to, to work with these people it does well you know? volunteers period across the board I, that's what mm -hmm. that's what my job is at my other job is mm -hmm. being with the volunteers and you don't get bad people in that people who are selfish and mean-spirited hardly volunteer their time no volunteers are nice people so you're working with a nice group absolutely well and you know unfortunately in this day and age you do have to go through some precautions um, yeah. and we do do background checks on our volunteers what we call our class a volunteers mm -hmm. um, and you know they have to have references and that kind of thing and they have to go through a protective behaviors training which is a, a training that we have online for them so that they could recognize an athlete that might have been sexually abused or might have some sort of a physical abuse you know brought upon them so they have to be aware of these things and they have to know how to report those because I mean it's very important for the safety of our athletes that we do not put them in an unsafe situation. That's it's, a sad it's, commentary. Yeah, I it know. Is. It is and a sad I, commentary, yeah, it is. But, it, but it's a fact of life. It's, it, it sure is. It, is. it sure is. Uh, speaking of safety, and uh, at the plunges, you, uh, I'm, I'm assuming that you have emergency personnel standing by in case we somebody do. has a we sudden do. attack yep. or something. Uh, Dan Folcher has been just phenomenal with uh, the emergency management team. Um, that'll be down there. He's got firefighters. He's got um, auxiliary mm -hmm. sheriff uh, mm -hmm. down there. He's got his dive team that'll be down there in the water mm -hmm. and in boats. Um, we rope off a four-foot area, as I mentioned, out from the beach. We also rope off from that an area where, you know, if boats would like to come and, and be spectators of the event, they can, but they can only come up so far. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously yes we are very aware of situations that may occur or might occur that we need to try and make sure that we're you know mm -hmm. taken care of or watching for you know it's all for the safety of the plungers so that they have a, a good time so well, with your 20 years experience mm -hmm. you certainly must have a pretty good idea of anything that could happen Right, right. And we've been very fortunate with this event that we've not had any um, instances or situations um, arise from from the event. But we want to keep everybody safe. And you mentioned the uh, Abraham uh, Lincoln Memorial Hospital. They're actually providing us donation of um, use of their towels and blankets uh, for the plungers. So we'll, well be, handing, be handy. handing them out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, as they come out of the water, they can immediately wrap up in that and um, dry off and and then go on to the changing tents that we have that are heated and you know there's a lot of people that I, I mean in the community that have provided for us for this event it's just amazing we're getting the tents from the fairgrounds we're getting you know heaters donated porta potties donated um, the food you know the KC hall the, the KC halls making us 20 gallons of chili Walmart's a, yeah Walmart's <laughs> a huge sponsor of this event providing all our, you know, pop and cookies and chips and everything. We're going to have 400 hot dogs that we're cooking that day and, and the buns and the condiments. And, you know, we just back up. They have it all ready for us to go, and we, we drive off with it. And it's yeah. just, just really neat Boy, the way the community comes together. Oh, God. <laughs> there there is. A lot of logistical planning. In it. it isn't like you just drive out there and we're going to jump in the water. Right, right. Uh, there's a <laughs> lot of planning that goes on with this. There is. And, and we, you're getting, obviously, and a tremendous amount of... of backup cooperation you that you just alluded to right right now if, uh, if anybody wanted to go out there and watch that just for the pure fun uh, mm -hmm. they've got to stay back in a certain way obviously and uh, stay out of the scenes mm -hmm. now exactly where it is uh, out there at Lincoln Lakes mm -hmm. in, you know my day the old Lincoln the old public beach right that was a great spot <laughs> uh, now where will this be held 
there. It is actually on the beach there. The old public beach the where the bathhouse used to be. I believe so, yes. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, um, the big wide beach that's down yes. there. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, what we do is we try and, and advise everyone to be bused down there. There's Because the only parking that's down there would be along the grassy, tall grassy area, mm -hmm. uh, shoulder off to the left as you're pulling in. And with all the rain that we've been having, we don't want to get any vehicles stuck. Oh, dear. Um, although if people have special needs or, you know, um, disabilities or something where they knew need to drive their vehicle down there. We do have, Dan Fulcher has arranged for shuttle service back and forth uh, from the gravel pit uh, parking lot, the old gravel pit area there, the round uh, area where they can actually pull back in there, park their vehicle, and we'll shuttle them down uh, into the beach area. Again, back. another logistical plan. There you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, think of all this yeah, stuff. No you do. Care. Yeah, so we've had a lot of planning meetings. You know, but that beach is not just a, a, a product of Mother Nature. That beach, oh. is, that beach is man made. Well, it was never a lake before it was man made. No, that was it? it was formed by the pumping of sand and gravel. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. But the Lincoln Lakes Association has done a wonderful job. Their members, they've already been down there and cleaned mm -hmm. up the beach area and a little, the path down into the to the beach area. They've cleared and, you know, cl See, cleaned it with brush. So, yeah, yeah. You. They've just really, really come together and made this event happen. And so we're very thankful for that. You're I'm not hankering for this for this position, but what's the old <laughs> but what's in your in your memory uh, or or your records? Uh, what's the oldest participant as far as actually plunging in? Well, we do have an award for that, you know, the I, oldest I, plunger I, award, and you get the actual plunger, you know, and we've got a little bear on it with the plaque. That's mm -hmm. the awards we give out. So that's mm -hmm. another fun twist on the awards that we give. Um, I would say yeah, everybody could use a plunger. I mean, they're well, there kind of a necessary household thing, aren't but they? But this isn't. Yeah, but this is a trophy. Though. A trophy. You plunger. want to display yeah. that with pride? Let me tell you. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's probably 66, I think. We had someone 66. Just a kid. Yeah. Uh, we've had somebody, um, I believe, 68, but not into their 70s. Oh, boy. But that's a brave uh, thing. Yeah. It is a brave the thing. The mind is willing, yeah. but the body is weak on this one. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, my spirit would not take that. Uh, I'd park in there. Uh, how many do you have signed up at this point in time? Well, at this particular time, we ha we're right at 90 uh, that have signed up online. Um, we have several teams that will be plunging in it. Um, and so we're anticipating that we'll have near 100, 120 plungers down there plunging, which is great. <laughs> it grows every year. Like I say, this is only the third year that we've um, hosted this. So... Um, it grows every year. It's it's a fun event. You know, it happens by word of mouth. We've got um, we got the junior high has a team. Um, well, the radio station here has a team. Um, we've got uh, uh, Walmart has a team. I go in. <laughs> Let's see. I have the official <laughs> name right you. here. They are the WLCN ninety six point three twelve hotties and a dude. <laughs> so there you have it. Well, let me write down the numbers of those hotties. <laughs> but I think the Logan County uh, Fair Queen will be plunging is this she? year. She said, "Yeah, that's well, what they bless say." Bless her heart. So, yeah. So come people, down and see that. How many people in Illinois uh, are actually participants in Special Olympics? Not the plunge, but the Special Olympics itself. The special right. people in the Special Olympics. Right, right. We have, um, we're, we're right around um, 25,000 that, that are registered to participate in the state of Illinois. Yeah. That is something isn't else, that awesome? isn't it? Mm -hmm. They come from all over the state. We have, uh, like I said, 18 areas. Our Area 10 here, which I am the area director of, consists of four counties, which Logan County is one of those counties. We have Macon County, we have Christian County, and then Moultrie County that's involved. So we have participants from all of those counties here locally, and I have near um, 400 athletes that I have in my counties that um, participate in, in different particular sports. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's, it's if, continuing if somebody to out there in our listening area were motivated to be a volunteer, mm -hmm. how would they go about 
getting in touch. Uh, with whom should they get in touch? Uh, it would be me. Our mm -hmm. area office is located in Decatur. Um, and I'm online. It's where you can find me through our Special Olympic website, which is very informational for anybody that's not visited our website. It's uh, www.soill.org. Mm -hmm. um, and they can click on Area 10. It shows the area, you know, it shows the state of Illinois map, and then it shows um, the different areas, and it encompasses the counties that Area 10 is involved with. So if they would click on, say, Logan County, why then my name and information would come up as the contact. Um, and my email address is jkeys, and it's K-E-Y-E-S, at S-O-I-L-L dot org. And uh, so we would be happy to get anybody involved, you know, that would be interested. Obviously, we, as you hear about the logistics of, of the <coughs> events that we hold, we also need volunteers that man those particular um, spots and jobs um, to make sure the events all all happen and happen in a smooth manner so um, we would welcome anyone that would be interested in participating either at an event or here locally with uh, the Special Olympics um, training and competition I know Ryan is very interested in entertaining anyone that that would like to become involved as a coach um, there's only so much one person can handle and he's really grown the program so yeah. Yes, Brian wanted to be with us today, but he had a business commitment with not allowing to be here. We appreciate the fact that he did want Ryan Curry he did want to be with us. Uh, Joni Keyes, we appreciate very much the fact that you have uh, driven over from Decatur to highlight uh, what you obviously have uh, your heart uh, uh, very set on, and you're working with a lot of great people. Uh, in life, we talk about a lot of failures and successes, and uh, always like to try to close with a little thing of some sort that... and. Uh, I guess uh, the two of the hardest things in life to handle are failures and success. Thank you very much for okay. viewing. Okay. Well, thank you very much for having me. It's been a good fun.